Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to this video. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to remotely connect to another device over the network. So now that we have a LAN set up, we can start to use it, right? So you know, you, you've, once you've got a network, it's built, you're pinging, that's fantastic. But you're not really doing much at, at that point. You still gotta build more on top of it and there's so many ideas out there so many projects so many fun and productive ways to use a network one of them and one of the most cool especially when i first started learning this i found that remote access was like the coolest thing i was like really you can remotely take over a computer that was magic and and to you all i hope that it, you see it as kind of like almost like magic you know they say good technology is indistinguishable from magic and and this feels like magic to me. So I'm going to show you that what we're doing is we're connecting from Windows to Mac OS. And this is a little bit of a different process than if I was connecting from Windows to Windows. Now, if I was connecting from Windows to Windows, I would use Remote Desktop Protocol or RDP. I will show you that in a future lesson. However, in this video, since we're connecting to a Mac, I'm going to use VNC. So go ahead and go out to realvnc.com and we're going to download the VNC viewer client. I'm doing it for Windows, but notice all the different platforms you got. You name it. You pretty much got it here. Test this out at home. If you've got an old iPhone or an old Android, it can still connect to Wi-Fi. Put it on the same Wi-Fi network. Put it on the same network as the, the computers you're playing around with and connect between them. You know, it's a great way to practice, right? Okay, so go ahead and download it, install it. I've already got it downloaded and installed, and then we're gonna open it up. So I've got VNC Viewer open. What do you think I'm gonna type in there at the top? I'm sure you could guess it, but I'm gonna let you know. I'm gonna be connecting to the IP address assigned to the laptop, the, the Mac, so which was 192.168.0.10. And as soon as I do that, I'm going to go ahead and hit enter, and it's going to try to initiate a connection. Notice it did. It said, oh, this is insecure connection. I don't know about this computer right now. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to say, hey, I know this computer. I only have two devices on my LAN right now, my, my isolated LAN. So I'm going to go ahead and connect. Now, what is this asking me for? This is asking me for the username and password. That is the username of your computer or the computer you're connecting to and the password of the computer you're connecting to. So any of the accounts on there. Um, this is a big part of information technology and of cybersecurity, is identity management. So then how, how, how are connections identified on the network? How are people identified on the network? And the most common way right now is really username and password, which I will not show you mine, just to be safe, so I'm gonna go out of this screen for the time being. I'm going to type in my username and password and we should be able to connect from there. So give me one second and you'll see it connect. So notice how there's my desktop. You can see I'm going to go ahead and maximize it and it looks like I'm on a Mac but I'm really on Windows and I'm just logging in to my Mac and I'll show you from scratch how I gave it an IP address. So it's already up here at the screen Obviously, I had to give it an IP address prior to being on camera, otherwise I couldn't remotely connect to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this. We live in a search-centric world, people, so anytime you have the opportunity to search, so you can either search settings or system preferences to get to system preferences in Mac. Search works wonderfully in most operating systems I've used. Um, and then you're gonna go to the network settings and then you're gonna just go to Ethernet. Notice there's many different ways to connect. Same with my laptop, there's Wi-Fi, but I've decided to use the Ethernet port or also known as the LAN port. I flipped this over to manual. Notice there's a lot of options. And I went and I assigned it .10. I left these blank because we'll talk about that in a separate lesson. But what I, I need you to pull away from this particular lesson is that the concepts that you're gonna learn and the concepts that you are learning right now they apply across the spectrum. So you didn't even need to own Mac OS to know that it has an IP address or it needs an IP address to communicate over the network. 
Um, so that that speaks to the interoperability to how of how networking works and how really, and we're going to talk about this later, the OSI model makes sure that we have this interoperability and this compatibility, even though we're using different operating systems made by different uh, companies and also companies that are competing with each other. But yet these protocols, these concepts, they, they're the same, right? So it's just a different, different settings are in different places. So as you can see there, I did set the IP address by following into system preferences and then network. I do want to show you how I enabled VNC because that didn't work by, that won't work by default. So you can type sharing and click on sharing. And what I had to do here is I had to actually check screen sharing, make sure that was enabled because by default that is not. And of course, the only users that are allowed to remotely connect would be users that are in the administrators group. So that, that's a concept there is that users, they get organized into groups. And if I had just allowed all users, that means anybody that knows how to use VNC could connect in. Right, and that's not something we want. We want to control access. That's how we protect against attacks, especially when we're enabling remote access. Like you see here is, I know it's a low risk environment, but if you pretend it's a business environment, anyone who has access to the network could at least initiate that attempt to remotely connect. So really you want to build in layers of security. And that, that comes really through managing how who has access and that's, typically boiling down to users too. So I hope this has been a good video for you. In the next video, we're going to go ahead and share some files, which is an additional service that you would add on to a network. So I'll see you in the next video.